Hey, what up, all the listeners? It's your man, Justin, aka Nemesis Prime, here on the Comic Con podcast. We are here, episode 28, recording it on July 14th, 2021. I got my man, Zach, all the way in Texas. What's going on, Zach? What's up, everybody? We're back again every week. We've been, um, I'm kind of like, I think we talked about this a couple weeks ago, or God, I can't even remember, but I'm sort of surprised we haven't actually missed a week. You know what I mean? Like, we've been going strong since we started every week. I've Mm -hmm. missed a week. Um, and you held it down, uh, when I, I think maybe one or two, two weeks, weeks. Two, two weeks, and I'm going to miss another week coming up just FYI. But, um, but we've been good, you know, like after a while, you know, sometimes these things kind of lag, you know, at times and like people are like, Oh, you know what? I'm kind of busy, but mm-hmm. we've been good about adjusting the dates based on our schedules and stuff. So it's fun, mm-hmm. man. It's kind of definitely one of the highlights of my week for sure. Oh yeah. And shout out to our listeners, uh, trial by gods. He, you know, messages us on Friday morning. He goes, Hey man, he's like, where's the podcast? I need it for my morning drive. And stupid me, I <laughs> scheduled it to drop on Friday night at like 7 PM instead of 7 AM. So oh, the old AM PM switch up, you know, that's, what's great about our listeners is man, they, they want to listen to it on the, their morning drive, which is really awesome. So again, shout out to Nate trial by gods. He's a great part of the community. Uh, he was on a recent live show on YouTube. I was checking him out. And of course, he's also sent a couple of community messages here and there. Yeah. But we're getting right into this, guys. Tonight, we are going to be talking about Loki final episode, complete review of the season. We're going to be talking about Black Widow. I know we said we would wait another week, but you could always skip over this if you want. And then, of course, after that, we have some DC news as well as some batman stuff that's going on and then we're gonna round out the evening with what are we currently reading so let's kind of get right into this yeah episode and, uh, six just spoil- for loki yeah spoiler you spoiler warning also yes. I mean, like justin said he's gonna put in the tag like the times and stuff like he always does so it'll say whatever 20.23 or whatever so skip forward to that if you have not watched either loki or scarlet witch that's gonna be our or scarlet witch uh black widow that's gonna be our spoilers <laughs> so yeah. So you and you want to do Loki first? Yeah, yeah. Let's okay. go Loki because this is uh, right off the heels, hot on the heels, as they say. So uh, Loki episode six just dropped today. Of course, everyone who's listening to this is listening on Friday, so you've gotten two days to watch it. If you haven't watched the series, you know this is your last chance to skip over this test section. So let's kind of get into the series. We we talked about it after the first episode. We mm-hmm. thoroughly enjoyed it. I am hundred percent in with this series. This was actually the first series on Disney plus that I am extremely excited to talk about after watching it. Okay. Uh, WandaVision. I was just like, eh, Falcon winter soldier was, eh, but this one, man, this one had me going the entire six episodes. There wasn't a lull where I felt like I was bored. I felt like the episodes could have been a little longer, but they were perfect length. Uh, there's so many spoilers in there towards the end of the series. Of course you have, you know, the kid Loki, the old Loki showing up, the alligator Loki, which was really interesting as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but here's I, I kind of want to take this. And now uh, overall, I, I think the series was great, but I want to take it into two parts. I want to take it as someone who's watching it as a casual watcher and then someone who's watching it as like a Marvel know it all, like someone okay. like yourself. Right. So. As someone who's casually watching this show, like if my parents watch this show or if my wife watched this show, that last episode, you're watching it and you're just like, okay, who is this guy? Right. Yeah. You know, it, it's great. The episode is great. His acting is unbelievable. Um, what's his Anthony Majors, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, That's his name. Jonathan, Jonathan Major. Jonathan. Jonathan Majors. So, you know, as a casual, you know, person, you're like, okay, but it, at the end, you kind of feel like it doesn't make sense, right? Yes, but I have a rebuttal to that. Okay. A little bit. So do we want to jump right to the end? You want to jump right to the end? Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of okay. going four, five, and six because we talked about like our mid-season, but... Yeah. And then so, I guess really... Oh, sorry, go ahead. And then, so, and then I guess from the side of being a Marvel know-it-all, I mean, you know, you know who he was, right? Mm-hmm, we, right. we all know. He, he, he talks about it. He says, I was once a conqueror. I was once this. I was once that. So you know who that is you know that it's kang and i feel like this is the first time in all three series that people were specking on the right character to show up (laughs) yeah so uh, so a couple things i want to i want to touch on a couple of things you said you you were talking about like the casual viewer right like um so i I, i'm assuming you mean like someone who's but maybe not familiar with the comics but has definitely watched the mcu correct 
Yes. Not like just someone who just decided, hey, I'm just going to start Loki without any reference point at all, correct? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, you know, I think, yeah, I agree with you. I think the casual viewer who's just been on the, in the journey of the MCU maybe hasn't even watched, like, you know, all of them. Maybe hasn't watched the Ant-Mans, the Captain Marvels, but has watched, like, the Avengers. Definitely knows who Loki is. Starts watching watching Loki. I think for sure they can enjoy it. I think the story is very self-contained. I don't mm -hmm. feel like there was much, um, and this isn't totally right, but I guess like there wasn't like a lot of, you didn't need to know all the background. All you needed to know was Loki died in a previous Avengers movie. He uh, was kind of a good guy, bad guy, and mm -hmm. he has issues, right? I mean, but other than that, there was really no characters from the MCU. There was no characters from the past MCU that showed up. So yeah. you could watch it and be like, oh, cool, you know? And like we've said before, um, Tom Hiddleston's performance is amazing. I mean, he just crushes as Loki. Yeah. Um, now, in terms of the end, I agree with you and I kind of disagree with you in a way. And I thought they were really genius about the way they did this. So, yeah, we know who he is, but that's not actually who he is. You know what I mean? Like he says, I've been called this, but correct. that's just a variant. He's not Kang the Conqueror. Yes. He's no, prevented Kang the Conqueror. So it is kind of like, it's kind of like, oh, do I need to know who this guy is? And it, and you don't because um, you won't see this guy again, probably. Like they won't ever see this version, you know? And so that, I thought it was cool how they didn't actually give him um, a name except, uh, what was it? The the one at the end or, oh the God. One who remains. The one who remains. That was the only name they gave him. You know what I mean? So I thought that was kind of cool. So it's like, hey, look, you don't, have to be bogged down by who this guy is. You're going to know Kang, the Conqueror. He's coming. He's one of the uh -huh. baddies that he who remains warned us about. So, yeah, I think it's, I, I thought it like it treaded, it, it followed a really thin, good line on that aspect. But do you feel like, because obviously they have, have nowhere started Ant Man Quantum Mania filming. Right. So now when that starts filming, do you think there's going to be references back to the, loki show because now they're even saying so again mm -hmm. we we've got confirmation that loki is being renewed for a second season there's also now rumors that loki is going to cameo appear in doctor strange right um you know and another great thing and while i was watching it and this again this is kind of what i was getting back between being someone who's a casual fan and a marvel know-it-all as i was watching that i really didn't know that that was a version of kang you know like yeah i knew the actor, like I was like thinking, I'm like, is this the actor? Is this the actor? I didn't want to Google it while I was watching it. Like right. I wanted him to completely act out all of his scenes. And then once he was like, yeah, I was once a conqueror. And I'm thinking, all right, this definitely is a version of Kang. Uh, I actually thought the branching off was going to end. And that's how this what if animated series is going to be. Mm -hmm. Like with all the different timelines. That's where right. I thought this was going to go. So, um, yeah, you know, I think like you said, um, we kind of got, it, it's been rumored. I don't know if this is like a for sure thing. I know some people are probably like, no, it's for sure. But like <laughs> Loki's supposed to show up in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. So mm -hmm. after this episode, I kind of really have been like thinking about this in terms of, it's almost like there's a trilogy involved in this multiverse situation. So we got Spider-Man No Way Home, a lot of theories and rumors about that being a multiversal crossover type movie. Then followed up right after that, we have Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which in the name alone says that it's going to be speaking about that. Um, with the introduction of Loki, maybe we see Doc Strange kind of getting the gist of the information from him, you know, and maybe we see some cameos or some shout outs to uh, Kang or Anthony Majors, um, Christopher, Jonathan Major. Guys, you know, now you messed me up. Jonathan Majors. <laughs> And then followed, you know, obviously the last one, maybe not the last one, but the big one, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. So mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to be the running theme through a lot of these movies, you know. But I'm also happy that there's going to be movies in the middle of those that may not be touching on this uh, multiverse of madness or this multiverse situation problem. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that was very much how the Infinity Saga went. You know, you had movies like... Um, that didn't really touch on the Thanos aspect of the infinity saga and um, still was great, you know, but 
And I, I think Marvel does that really well. You know what I mean? But I feel like there's very few that didn't touch on either the Infinity Stones or Thanos himself. Well, you had, I would say, let's see. Um, Winter Soldier definitely did not. There was no yeah. stones. There was no Thanos in that one. Um, Ant Man. Ant Man initially, no. Yeah, for sure. Did not. Um, I'm but trying to I, think. I figure it's yeah. like, I think it flip flops, but I would say the majority right. of it definitely touches it. But so, you know, let, let's kind of go, you know, what was your review of the entire so, series? So I, I, li- I really, really liked it a lot. I, I liked it a lot. I thought that one of my favorite aspects about this series was the dynamic between Owen Wilson and Tom Hiddleston. I thought that was so great. Like it was kind of mm-hmm. this like antagonistic friendship that was at times would bloom. And then at times, you know, would just like Loki would do something. And then Owen Wilson like knew it, you know, he's like, see, this is why we can't be friends type situation. Um, I mm-hmm. thought that was great. I really loved what we saw at the end, the interaction between um, Sophie and Loki at the end with Mm -hmm. the little dynamic on what they were going to do in terms of he who must remain or he, he who remains, it was like, you know, Loki saying, I can't be trusted and you can't trust. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was, that was so powerful in a way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I I liked it. I loved the characters. There was really only like four characters really, you know, like, um, and I thought they did it really well. I really want to touch on, uh, what someone who, one of our uh, one of our friends in the community thought um, Mobius was. So, I mean, God, dude, this these Disney Plus shows have been so much fun, right? Yeah. But there's been so much annoyance in terms of the spec and like people just like trying to guess and not be, you know, not enjoy it. First off, no one gets credit for guessing Kang. You don't get it. Like that was that was pretty much a for sure. Like everyone knew that was coming. Like we just yeah. was like, Oh, well maybe it won't come, but we know that's who's going to be involved at the end. So anyone who's out there like, Oh, I claimed it. I called it. You didn't like, okay, that's, that's ridiculous. But yeah, we did have someone who thought that, um, Mobius was going to end up being a variant version of Kang. Now is it, <laughs> is it unbelievable? No, but I wouldn't say there was even a remote um, hint or inkling about that. Like there was no evidence that supported that theory. Um, in fact, I thought it was interesting. You mentioned this a little earlier when he was kind of given his whole spiel and you were like, well, you wouldn't have known he was Kang. The only real references you had was like the conqueror comment. And then when he was doing the little like, um, figurines, you know what I mean? Yeah. You, could, you couldn't see them super well, but you could see they kind of had like the, the Kang costume. Mm-hmm. But I thought what I thought was interesting was as opposed to what we've seen with like the Loki variants being like different races, sexes, skin colors, um, mm-hmm. animals, you know, <laughs> um, they all looked the same. All the Kangs looked very, very similar. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Could it be possible Mobius end up being um, a, a Kang variant? I don't know, maybe, but I don't know because he, he he wanted to get it on his uh, wave runner or jet ski, whatever. That was the <laughs> right. whole thing. Uh, it's going to be interesting because I, you know, I as I was watching that, and then even Mobius's friend, the judge, yeah, you know, she kind of leaves, and you don't know what happens to her. So you're like, yeah, her story's done. This is really how they're going to end this. But then, of course, then they renew it for a season two. So you assume mm-hmm. that she's going to be back. And taking orders from somebody else. Yeah, her motivations were strange to me. Like, um, you know, we find out that she she's kind of in on the idea that variants that everyone's a variant. Um, it didn't seem like she wasn't. She didn't know that the TV or the the um, timekeepers were fake until the head got chopped off. Right. Mm-hmm. That's that's the that's the impression I got. Yeah. And then she really wasn't bothered by it. She was very much like, "Hey, look, you know." doesn't really matter who's at the end. We got a job to do. Let's do the job. Mm -hmm. But the end there, she kind of went on a mission, right? Like she was given some knowledge by the little um, clock person, Mrs. Minutes. Mm -hmm. And we don't know where she went. So, yeah, it's going to be really interesting what happens in season two with all these characters. Like who's coming back? Right. Obviously, is Moby is coming back? Obviously, she's got to come back. Loki, Sylphie. Uh, I obviously want to see kid Loki show back up. There's, <laughs> could there be other Loki variants that we haven't seen yeah. show up? Could we see other versions of Thor in this season? 
Right. I, I, actually, I was kind of surprised we never saw a Thor variant. You know what I mean? Besides like Throg or, yeah. uh, you know, the hammer Mjolnir and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I do think, and you mentioned this as well earlier, I think for sure, you know, like if anyone was like, well, I don't really know what, what if is going to be about or like what, where it really is. Is this just like a fan service type show? This de- it definitely fits in now, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, so there's just so many possibilities. Um, so in, let me ask you this. Do you like your DC fan and DC pretty much invented multiverse <laughs> in my opinion? Are you happy Marvel's doing this? Mm, I don't know. Like, because yeah, like you said, DC is all DC has done this. Like they've yeah. already talked about it's been done in the CW has on, um, hasn't been done in films, but I feel like we've seen this. We've seen like different versions of Batman. We've seen different versions of flash, right? Uh, you know, other characters who've shown up throughout all the CW stuff, Superman, do I feel like this is, you know, Marvel's next move? Yeah, I guess it is. It's fine because, again, we don't have a you don't have another villain. Um, recently, they they posted like the top ten. Like Shield posted some something picture of like who's the top ten villains, and we've already gotten a good amount of them, right? Right. Like Thanos, the Infinity Stones. You know, now it's just like, well, who are the other big baddies? Obviously, yes, Galactus will come at some point, but. Yeah, but Obviously. he's even like a does he's just like to me, everyone claims a big baddie for him, but to me, he's like a hurricane. He's a force of nature. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you're gonna have to have him at some point, and all right. the characters are gonna come or and Dr. Doom. But Doom, now, Magneto, yeah. Avengers, Avengers level threats, which is that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Again, him being an Ant Man, I I don't know. I feel like it's gonna be it's gonna be good, but I feel like you're gonna see him in multiple movies. Like yeah, I would, I would have a so. setup. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I don't know. Like, I, I'm excited about it, um, but I also kind of part of me has like this groan factor, if you will, where it's like, Ugh, okay, time travel, multiverse. It just it, it always leaves so many like chances for things not to be real. You know what I mean? And I hate that. So it's like, yeah, is it cool to see characters come back from the dead? Sometimes, but sometimes it really bothers me. Like when you kill a character. And then you have this like, emotional connection to the death of said character, right? Mm-hmm. And then two movies later or whatever, oh, we, we fixed the timeline and he comes back. I feel cheated in a way. Like, I'm like, well, all that stuff you did before was pointless. Like, you you know, it, it's it's disingenuine in a way. So mm-hmm. sometimes, like, I, I, I think it's cool. And obviously with a character like Kang, you got to have some form of time travel, some form of multiverse. Um, but it does get very confusing. And I think... It's something like this that will, that can throw off the casual viewer. You know what I mean? Yeah. A casual I, viewer can watch that and be like, ugh, you know, <laughs> like I'm not, I can't think that much. So, well, that's what, you know, like I said earlier with Loki being, you know, coming into the multiverse of madness, I guess we're really going to have to watch what happens with Doctor Strange because, yeah, then it's kind of like, well, then the floodgates are open. Hell, uh, Black Widow could come back, you know, anybody's liable to come back vision can come back like they'll make ways right. to find these characters to really show them up to just be like all right well they're brought back here it is they didn't die let's keep it moving now you know similar how they do in the comic book world so right so speaking on <clears throat> that aspect kind of like the multiverse thing I, i'm reading an article that uh i think this is i think personally this is pretty dumb but um charles murphy you know behind uh, popular murphy's multiverse tweeted that you have to stop typing MCU now. Think about that. Think about how one episode of a streaming series changed everything. Marvel Cinematic Multiverse is what they're saying. You got to now call it. <laughs> and because of that, like you can now say, you know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which apparently they're saying isn't canon, is now canon. They're saying like all the old Marvel movies, like the Punisher, the Sony, uh, spider Man, they're all canon now because they're in this multiverse. And I'm kind of like, dude, shut up. (laughs) (laughs) It's the MCU. Like, you don't get to just change it. Now it's the multiverse. Like, I think it's a phase thing. I really do. I I kind of feel like maybe it's a phase thing. It's like a a fan, um, a way to like appease the fans. I mean, because who doesn't want to see all the Spideys come back, you know, for like one, one, one movie or whatever, and then get rid of them. But like, maybe it's just phase four. Hopefully that's my, that's my thought hopes is that after phase four is done, we move on from the multiverse. Cause it just, it's too much. 
you know? Mm -hmm. So, but I love Loki, that being said. Cool. All right. So that's our Loki review. We don't want to, you know, spend the entire episode talking about Loki. So let's talk about some other Marvel stuff. So Black Widow came out. I know everybody, if you listen to last week's episode, we told you we're going to wait two weeks, but you know what? It's out. If you haven't gone to the movie theaters, I'm sure you probably just paid the extra $30 and got it on Disney Plus for the one month because it's mm -hmm. a lot cheaper to just get it on Disney Plus. So this is, again, your spoiler review of Black Widow, giving you another 15 seconds, and then we'll kind of start talking about it. But so before we get into the review, this was just posted online. Maybe today is Wednesday. It was posted on Monday. So. Uh, box office box office opening weekend for Black Widow did eighty million dollars domestically, seventy eight million dollars at the international box office, and sixty plus million with Disney Plus premiere wow. access globally, which is crazy. So that basically means that it did two hundred and fifteen million dollars in its opening weekend, and sixty million of that is coming from just people being like, "Yeah, I'm gonna just pay the extra thirty dollars for the month and right. have it." So well, you're you're right. If you have a family, it's definitely cheaper probably than taking the way. whole crew to the movie with popcorn Ugh. and everything else. You know what movie tickets are like damn near 10 bucks a person now, you know? Yeah. So uh, that is your numbers for Black Widow. So now we're going to get into the review part. Uh, why don't you start this one off since you went to go see it on Thursday night? Okay, but I'm excited to hear you because I feel like you've told me that you've been looking forward to talking <laughs> about this. I know so I was really looking forward more to talking about Loki but this too. Okay. So, okay. I feel like I know where you're going to go with it. So I'll be positive so you can bash. Okay. Oh. So, um, I enjoyed it. Do I think it was, um, a necessary movie? No, I don't think it was necessary, but I also don't think it's necessary to drink my own urine, but I do mm -hmm. it because it's sterile and I love the taste. Oh, so nice. you know what that's from? Um, uh, dodge Jim carry. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. So, uh, I very much enjoyed Black Widow. Um, I think some of the 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 shininess kind of wore off because we waited so long for this, you know. But mm -hmm. in a way, I also kind of think it was good because this is the first film that we've had. We're back from COVID. We're back into it. We get a movie. But it's not like a super important movie. So it's kind of like, oh, cool. It kind of like wets the whistle a little bit and preps mm -hmm. us for Shang-Chi, Eternal, Spider-Man No Way Home, and Doc Strange, you know. So... Um, it was cool. I enjoyed the cast. I thought they stole the show from um, mm -hmm. Black Widow. I thought Yelena Belova was the best part of the movie. I thought she was amazing. And I didn't think I was really going to like her that much because it's always tough. You know, like everyone kind of knew, hey, look, moving forward, we're probably going to get a new Black Widow. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to get this Yelena Belova. And a lot of people, you know, you can kind of be like, Ugh, OK, so we get like B team Black Widow. And you kind of go into it with that uh, that bias in a way. But man, I, I, she was great. I thought she crushed it. Um, I loved uh, Red Guardian was funny. I thought the um, the Iron Maiden was great. Uh, Taskmaster was a bit of a letdown in a way. Um, but mm -hmm. maybe we can do more with that. But all in all, I enjoyed the movie. Um, I don't want to talk about the uh, post credit scene until after we hear your review. But... I, I, I liked it. I, I definitely liked it. I didn't think it was great. I think I told you mm -hmm. this a couple of times. It's it's not in the bottom tier of Marvel movies for me. Um, it's probably middle of the pack, I think. Ooh. Maybe maybe bottom of the middle of the pack. So I like to break it up in three tiers. The best three, or the top tier is the best, mm -hmm. middle tier, and then bottom tier. And I would say it's probably bottom of the middle tier for me. Okay. I have to know Go. what is below this movie. Okay. Iron Man three is below this. Oh, this yeah, yeah, that's just dark. That's dark the world. Dark world's below this. Okay. Um, I think Captain Marvel's below this. Um, now, no one, See, just, I knew you were no one, say cru Captain no Marvel. one crucify me on this because this that's just this is just my opinion. But. Okay. Hold on, I'm looking at a list. Um, let's see what everyone. So I, I knew you were going to say Captain Marvel, and I don't know why people hate on that movie. I literally can watch that movie and enjoy it, even though it's a prequel. It's set in the 90s, so it's nowhere near any of the other Marvel movies, but it introduces characters that are right. future setups other than like Nick Fury and Coulson, but it does something. It does something for the MCU. Oh, Spider-Man Homecoming, I think, is low for me as well. Okay. 
Um, right. Oh, uh, so one of the main reasons I didn't like Captain Marvel was because I, Nick Fury's character did not mesh with future Nick Fury. Honestly, mm -hmm. I felt like we had jovial, jokey Nick Fury and Captain Marvel. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, he's all of a sudden hard ass Nick Fury that we've seen in the MCU. And there was literally nothing that happened in that movie <laughs> that made him switch, except mm -hmm. some cat scratched his damn eye out. You know, like mm -hmm. it okay. didn't, his character did not make sense to me in that movie. All right. All right. So let me jump into my review. Do it. Let's hear it. I think the movie, like if you just watch it, mm -hmm. it's a good movie. It's definitely a Jason Bourne, John Wick, like that type of like spy movie, uh, Tom Clancy type movie. Right. If you watch it as a Marvel movie, it's dog shit. If you <laughs> remove Yelena Belova, I'm sorry. Okay. It's, fair. Fair. I think F Florence Poog, Poog, is this her last name? I think that's her last. She is, yeah, she's gorgeous. She's a great actress. She stole the show, like you said. Rachel Weiss, great actress. She was all right, but I feel like she was underused. True. David Hayter as Red Guardian, underused. I felt like his character David was Har kind of David Harbour. Harbour. Yeah. I feel like he was his character was like stretching it. Like I feel like there wasn't enough of him. Okay. Uh, you know, watching the movie, you know, a lot of people were like, oh, well, this movie is going to be pre the Avengers. Like, it's going to be her origin. But then, you know, a week before the movie came out, I, I found out that it's set up after Civil War. So it got me a little bit more intrigued to watch it. But I literally sat there and I was just like, I want this movie to end because oh, I want to see where like it's almost like an, it's like. It's like watching a Netflix series because all the episodes are ready there for you, right? right. And you're like, I just want to get to the end because I want to know what happens. See what that's, it sets up for. Yes. Okay. That's how I felt like watching this movie. I'm just like, there was a couple of times where I actually paused it to see how much time was left. And I'm like, all right, what's going to happen? <laughs> and even like towards the end when like they take out the red room and watching the trailers, you know that like Black Widow fights Taskmaster falling from the sky mm -hmm. and then that little crap fight at the end you're like man that was terrible and everybody wanted taskmaster to be cool <sighs> i don't know i yeah. feel like he, yeah like you said it was a let he was a letdown villain uh i really think this movie should have come out a long time ago if that's you know that again that's where they did it was the, in between civil war and infinity war and like you said the the fluff isn't there anymore because it waited so long to come out i think maybe if it came out last year when it would have we would feel better for it, but I don't know. I just was just like, I could not wait for it to be over. Now that was only my first viewing again, as a casual watcher of a movie. I think the movie was good as an MCU watcher. I thought it was poop. Okay. Oh, poop. I get, I totally, I 100% understand like where you're coming from. And like, I even, I even kind of like buck at it a little, like in terms of like, like Taskmaster was definitely one of the biggest letdowns, right? It was such a cool character. Um, and that's not to say that we may not see Taskmaster again. Obviously, if you've seen the movie, you know that there is an option for that. Um, and I really hope we do because just having it kind of like that Taskmaster as like a mindless drone kind of character that couldn't talk, you know, and, and I get it because the big like the big reveal. But to be honest with you, that reveal wasn't so like jaw dropping that I felt like they had to ruin the character over it. You know what I mean? Cause like, mm -hmm. that's what they did. They had such a big, like, like spin and thing planned that they kind of ruined a character for the payoff, which was like, Oh, okay. So it's just this dude's daughter, you know, like, Oh, yeah. well it could have been his son and or whatever. And it could have, and you could have had him talk and like interact. And I don't know. It didn't, the payoff like they were wasn't pushing it. The they were pushing it to be his daughter, like throughout the whole movie. Like the constant back and forth between Yelena and Black Widow, right? Was just like to the point where you're like, "All right, maybe, maybe this guy's not dead, and maybe the daughter's not dead because you didn't find the body." Like, oh well, don't you think that it's still alive? Like, who do you think's running the Red Room? Who do you think Taskmaster is? Like, I feel like it was constantly thrown in your face. Mm -hmm. So, like when the reveal happens, because it would be like, why would this guy who controls a bunch of women control a guy right right you know and uh, i don't know if this is the case but i wonder obviously you know marvel now owned by disney but if we if you look back like 
what so we have very few female um characters in the mcu that are like the, the main characters and honestly besides captain marvel she might have been the only one we've never really seen like a like black widow fight a man you know what i mean like full-on mm -hmm. main fight and i'm not talking about like oh everyone's gonna be like no no she fought soldiers and stuff like that yeah yeah but like a main character fist to the face constant constant mm -hmm. battle i think captain marvel might be the only one and even with um whatever his name was in uh, Captain Marvel, they oh, were like uh, shooting bolts Jude at Laws. each other, right? Jude yeah, Jude Law, yeah. yeah. So maybe that was why they switched it. Maybe it's like, oh, it's okay because it's a girl fighting a girl. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, dude. Who knows? <laughs> I don't Who know. Who knows? I, uh, I don't know. I Again, that's my first viewing. If I watch it again, maybe I'll feel a little bit better. But like I said, I just, I, I started watching it and I just, I really want it to be over because I feel like I knew it wasn't going to set up anything until the post credit scene. Right. And so the first, happened. the opening scene kind of was like long for me. You know what I mean? Did you feel that way too? Like when she was a kid and they were all escaping as like um, the Russian that spies. Long. That was a little long for me. Actually, but I, I get you, it. And what's really cool, of course, is the Nirvana cover. Oh, God. Dude, I've been listening. I listened to that at the gym on repeat <laughs> today. Like that shit was dope. I remember hearing that. I was like, wait what is this smells yeah. like teen spirit that might be the best part of this movie i like watched it and then i paused it and i rewound it and i called my wife i go yo check this out and it was like uh -huh. let's listen to this song like, i'm so glad you're uh, there's someone else who liked that too because i heard <laughs> it in the theater and i was like holy shit because it took me a while you know because it's yeah. slower mm -hmm. and i was like wait i know these words and this like yep. beat oh yeah i listened to that on replay at the gym today dude massive like a <laughs> bunch of times um, so let's move into the end credits. Let's hear yes. go. You go. So I feel like if you don't have Disney plus, which I feel like everybody has it and everybody's watched the shows and maybe a lot of people haven't. And they're really just people who go and sit at the movie theaters and watch these movies. You wouldn't know who this character is, mm -hmm. right? You okay. wouldn't know who Julie, Julie Dreyfus's character is. Uh, do I like how she's setting this up? Because now we, basically have confirmation that Yelena is going to be in the Hawkeye series. Right. I think which had been rumored, right? For a while yes. it had been rumored. Yeah. A little rumor ish. Um, and I feel like maybe that's why he's on the run and he doesn't want to be Hawkeye anymore. Cause he's going to have to leave. Um, per, per my, you know, request or wish last week, I kind of wanted, uh, Jeremy Renner's character, Hawkeye to mm -hmm. Clint Barton to actually tell Yelena that, she's she's dead and right whatever but uh i think it was all right you know i think it it sets up some stuff you know and a lot of people are like well it doesn't really set up the thunderbolts which is another thing that everybody was kind of specking on mm -hmm. right yeah um a couple things so i thought it, i was i was i was really happy i'm glad you brought this up and reminded me i was happy there there was enough mention throughout the movie of hawkeye and clint clint barton in the relationship with uh with black widow because i thought that was going to be weird you know what i mean they're like best friends her mm -hmm. whole character revolves kind of around that obviously her ending revolves around clint barton and i was worried going in the movie like dude are they even going to reference him if they don't that's weird to me so that I'm was really he cool. wasn't even in it so he did have that voice role um it was an uncredited voice role like when they did the flashback of her bombing the okay. the business or yes. the business yeah, the building like on the phone or whatever yeah 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 so i thought that was cool i'm kind of glad he wasn't in it because it's also it, like i like i've said before on the mc like you don't need all these characters to show up because sometimes it takes away from the story of another character so mm -hmm. i thought that was good his presence was felt without being there mm -hmm. um now in terms of valentina yeah, I really like that. I thought it was cool. And like you said, you know, people are suspecting or, you know, predicting that it's Thunderbolts, which maybe it could be. I've mm -hmm. read some stuff that some people think maybe it's taken more of a Dark Avengers um, route, which okay. I think what we've seen in the MCU now is I think they've shown us like, hey, look, nothing's going to come exactly like you think it's going to come. Like the merging, <laughs> the merging of stuff. Like, Look at uh, Enchantress and the Sophie Loki Enchantress character in uh, Loki. Uh -huh. It very much was like three different things merged to one and boom, this is what we got, you know? Uh -huh. So I do think we're going to get a Thunderbolts-esque slash Dark Avengers-esque team. I mean, look what you set up. You got, 
your dark Captain America. You got your dark Black Widow. Um, who else do we got that they there's rumored? I mean, Thunderbolt Ross kind of being around, you know, as well. Abomination, possibly, but possibly. Um, and, and Valentina is kind of like a dark Nick Fury. So mm -hmm. it could be, I think it's a little going to be like an amalgamation of Dark Avengers and Thunderbolts. We'll see. Mm -hmm. um, but so let me ask you this, and I think I know the answer to this, but let me see what you, <laughs> what you think. But so this movie originally, this was going to be Valentina's first appearance, right? Based on oh, time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I wonder if they shot this prior. Like, did they change the post credit scene? Yeah, I wonder that too. Like, that's the thing. Like, because it came after Falcon Winter Soldier, did the post credit scene change and put her in? Or was it always planned that this was going to be her first appearance? Oh. Not that it really smart. matters, but <laughs> I, I, I definitely, like, was thinking about that. Because... She even had like, let's say this was supposed to be her first appearance, you know? Yeah. But she had little like um, mannerisms that she had in Falcon Winter Soldier. You know what I mean? So yeah. you wouldn't have known those mannerisms. They wouldn't have been as funny if this was her first appearance, I guess, in a way. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's... Or was it? it was that still the plan was to have her, but maybe it was reshot because right. we saw her first in Falcon True. Winter Soldier? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. That's a, Maybe that's it would have been more of like question. an intro, like introduction to her, and then they did reshoot, reshoot it because of... Yeah, kind of like who she is. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that, that's actually a really good thought. I wonder... And if anybody's listening out there, when we post this on Instagram, you know, what are your thoughts? Do you think that they switched it? Do you think that this really would have been her first appearance the way it was um that's good man hmm. yeah so your thoughts then where do you rank it in the same structure you put in you're putting it in the bottom tier of the movie uh, yeah right now it's definitely in the bottom tier okay. i would put all those other movies above I, I would put black widow above the majority of those movies minus captain marvel because captain marvel for me is still is, is higher on the list of move of marvel movies okay and and it's not even like I'm a Brie Larson fan. I just like I just like I enjoyed the movie. Um, I like the scrolls. Yeah, it was just a great for me. It was a good movie. It was a movie that I can continuously watch over. I, I don't know why, but I, I can watch it without feeling like ugh, like everybody else does like you do and other people. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> but um, final thoughts and then we can move on to our next topic. Final thoughts is Good movie, average rating. Glad the mm -hmm. MCU is back, and I'm not calling it the MCM, the Man Crush Monday, Marvel Cinematic Multiverse. I'm not doing that. And anyone who does sucks. So, uh, all right. So that's our TV and movie review news. Let's move on to some TV stuff, and now we're going to do the flip side, DC, some DC mm. Titans. So today they just dropped the official third official trailer for season three. Uh, we did get a teaser trailer last month, which kind of showed off uh, all the characters, a little returning of most of the characters. We saw a little bit of uh, Starfire in her costume. We had Blackfire in there. We did get a little bit of a tease of Red Hood. We knew he was coming this season. Mm -hmm. But with today's trailer that just dropped, man, this is a huge banger. We have the real like uh, origin story of how... Uh, Jason Todd is going to become Red Hood. It looks very violent. And if anyone has read the Under the Red Hood series, you know how violent it is or watch the TV animated movie. Um, my thoughts, and I just watched it literally before we recorded. I got chills watching it. I am <laughs> so excited for Jason Todd Red Hood. Um, you do see a very quick shot of uh, Raven in like a new costume. Again, you have Starfire. We get the first introduction of Barbara Gordon mm -hmm. in this. You also get to see, I guess you, you definitely get to see in a shadow form, the Joker. No confirmation of who it is, but uh, we do see the crowbar. And then, you know, towards the end, we, we get our, you know, an overarching character who is, I think he's kind of talking throughout a lot of the trailer is Jonathan Crane Scarecrow, who was also confirmation. So um, thoughts on this, man. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I thought it was really cool. The um, I like I like the teaser trailer as well. I thought it was mm -hmm. really awesome. We definitely got more um, more Barbara Gordon in this, and kind of like her interaction with uh, with Dick, and like hinting that she's the commissioner now. I don't know yep. if 
he was yeah. just making that comment. Maybe she's just a cop and he's saying, oh, you're following in the footsteps. But it kind of like went into that, which makes sense because honestly, season one of Titans, when Dick was a cop, I thought that was weird. That didn't mesh to me at all. Um, so this kind of makes a little bit more sense that he's back, like working with the lawn with law enforcement a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked, and we didn't get to see a lot of it. I liked that they showed Bruce Wayne struggling with what happened to Jason Todd um, mm-hmm. and kind of saying, telling Dick like, Hey, you need to be Batman now. Like I, I fucked up. So mm-hmm. uh, I thought that was cool. Um, I agree with Like I was, ha- I, I'm happy with what we know seems like the role of uh scarecrow like i wasn't mm-hmm. sure what i thought about like okay so scarecrow is going to be loose is he going to be this villain who they're like kind of going up against and i was like eh, i don't know if i'm too crazy about that i love scarecrow but it kind of seems like he's actually more of like um he's like a consultant you know what i mean yeah. like he's going to be behind bars the whole time and i actually yeah. like that way better yeah I, I think, and I feel like they've done that with season two as well. I, I you can't throw a lot of villains right. in these episodes because in season two you had you had Doctor Light and you had Deathstroke. Mm-hmm. That was kind of like the back and forth in the few episodes. In this season, you're going to have the Red Hood storyline, but then you're also now dealing with more of the Blackfire character who was introduced right. in season two. So you're really going to get these two story arcs that are kind of going to run side by side. Because you have all these characters in the Titans universe. So you need to have, you know, they, they're they going to have their own screen time for each story. You can't right. have them all running the Red Hood storyline and all running the Blackfire storyline. Yeah, I think Blackfire is going to be our primary villain. I think anyone who's familiar with the story knows Red Hood's going to play more of like a anti-hero, vigilante, kind of like buck in the system type character. Mm-hmm. And it also seemed like, now correct me if I'm wrong, when I watched this movie, when the the trailer i got the vibe that it's like a lot of red hoods like it was almost like a flag smasher situation because they take the hood off someone and it's a girl oh i didn't notice that part i may have to rewatch it then yeah Hmm. i got the vibe that maybe he's like he's he's making like a team of red kind of like the red hood gang kind of yeah and they're like out there Hmm. posing and and doing these different things like it got really like a flag smasher vibe for me when i saw it the first time interesting yeah i didn't notice that but uh well, another thing with Titans, and you know, we can kind of just round this out. Uh, the first three episodes of Titans will debut on Thursday, August twelfth. Oh, we get three in a row. Yeah, so you're dropping all three of them on Thursday, August twelfth, and then they will be premiering weekly every Thursday through October twenty first. So, I guess Sweet. they don't want to go against Disney Plus, and you know, dropping it on a Thursday, I guess, gets more people to watch it. But dropping the first three episodes right away is uh is pretty interesting you know we've seen that with disney plus we saw that with the bad batch they dropped three episodes right mm-hmm. in a row so it kind of maybe it's kind of like a send-off to season two and then really moves into season three so yeah i think they want to get you hooked you know and i think they're worried obviously these like episodic shows that come out weekly it's sometimes you know you have people who just love the binge aspect Mm-hmm. And so I think that's what this kind of combats, you know, it's like, here, look, we'll give you three real quick, but then you're waiting weekly, you know, get hooked and then, and then come back next week. Mm-hmm. So yeah. what do you think about, so we also saw, you know, a little bit more Tim Drake. What'd you think about that? Um, I don't know. I, he, he's still very, you know, limited to what mm-hmm. you see in the trailer. I think it's still a lot of, a lot of Dick Grayson, like throughout, <laughs> that's just, like, that's the main theme right. of all these seasons has always been uh nightwing you definitely see him a lot more action you see uh connor's in there again there's still yep. that the whole storyline or story arc with hawk and dove is still there um still cannot believe you know we're, we're enjoying that with uh i love my girl dove <laughs> M- M- mika kelly oh all day yeah. on the on the titan show see i'm a massive donna troy fan that connor leslie dude and i'm super happy she's coming <laughs> back so mm, well we'll see what happens it's uh only it's right around the corner so we're really a month away from season three of titans so we'll yeah. be definitely talking about that maybe we'll do the same thing we'll do uh a first review of the first three episodes and then we'll do a mid-season and, and a final season final review on that i'm excited for that to start because i know we really don't talk about the dccw shows you know we did superman right. um and then recently of course you know batwoman's done 
but um, what's going on with Flash? We had the first appearance of Impulse, so and that was really cool to see him. You know, that's been teased for a while now. So I know we really don't talk about so too much of the DC side, but I think Titans is going to be a lot of fun to talk about as the episodes come out. Definitely. So last but not least, before we get into what are we currently reading? Not too much as we're recording this episode as far as comic book news, but we did find this really interesting article. This is over at gamesradar.com. So the Batman screenwriter asks, what if Batman was real in, in a new comic book series? So DC Black Label is going to be coming out with a series called Batman the Imposter. It's a new and different look at Gotham's Guardian as he begins his war on crime. So it's going to only be three issues. Good old prestige format, of course, from the DC uh, Black Label series. It's going to be coming in October, and it basically says that the publisher is calling it a unique vision and a new and different look at Gotham's Guardian as he begins his war on crime throughout the series. So we have the writer who's currently writing, uh, the screenwriter who's currently writing the Matt Reeves Batman, and who is uh, Matt, Mattson Tom, um, Tomaslin. And then you have a great artist who's already part of the, the DC Black Label. He did the Joker smiling. Andrew Sorrentino, and I talked about him recently. He did the Green Arrow run from New 52. So uh, this is a really interesting story how they're talking about it. So it's basically Batman, if you actually was in real life getting hurt. So I feel like it's kind of like a Christopher Nolan Batman because that's yeah. the kind of Batman we saw. Like not someone who can lift, you know, crazy weights and right. not get hurt. We actually saw this happen in the Dark Knight trilogy. Mm hmm. So I'm excited for this. What do you what do you think about this little uh, limited series? Yeah, I saw it. I, I saw it advertised. I'm interested in it. Um, we'll see as it gets closer if I'm going to end up reading it. But yeah, I, I love I love the more grounded Batman for sure. Um, he's such a grounded character with campy villains at times that it's like it, sometimes it's a mismatch. So mm -hmm. like I really like uh, I really liked Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight because of the realism. Like it was kind of like yo, this kind of makes sense, like that, why this would happen, you know, and the like, villains weren't super campy. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll definitely check it out. I mean, dude, it's hard to go wrong with Batman. Yeah. And I, again, it's it's the black label stuff. So it, you right. can read it and not expect it to be in continuity with what else is going on in the DC world. That's what's great about the DC black label stuff. So three issues going to be in that prestige format. Uh, great artist uh, and, a, you know, a base, I'd say an up and coming writer. Right. Yeah, for sure. So uh, let's move on to our final topic for the evening. What are we currently reading? Of course, we'd love to talk about what's going on, what both myself and Zach are reading currently this week. Um, this week, I'm going to go first. So actually, hold on. Let, no, I think so, because I don't really have one. So I'm just going to no. I'm going to give like a couple honorable mentions. And I wanted to bring up. I remember what I wanted to tell you. And then Ooh. so I'm not really going to talk about a book. Um Nothing really came out this week that blew me away, and I'm not reading mm -hmm. anything new. Um, some honorable mentions. I really enjoyed Die Number 18. Obviously, we're getting really close to the yes. end here. Two more epi or episodes, two more issues. Um, I'm reading Extreme Carnage. I'm kind of surprised I'm doing that, but uh, it's okay. Whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I liked the Batman Urban Legends. I've been enjoying that format quite a bit. Um, that was pretty cool. But the one I wanted to talk to you about was, did you read Joker? this uh the latest yeah. one yeah yes dude the art is horrible like yes. I, I was so pissed and yes. I, I honestly thought about you because you and i have both like really enjoyed joker and this was a very they didn't even move the story dude it was just like a mm -hmm. it was such a waste of an issue and i was like god this art's fucking horrendous like well thank god, god for the punchline so thank god for the punchline Side right. story because that's the only thing that saved that issue for me. Yeah, dude. Oh, I was bummed because honestly, Joker has been one of those issues every month that I've been like really excited for because it's been awesome. So yeah. that's all I got. All right. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you with the Joker. I, I opened up the book and I didn't see Gillian Marsh's art and I and I'm like reading it and it's just it's just not moving. It's not doing it for me. And right. again, that's what I feel like. If the art is not there for me, I can't enjoy the storyline. And this art just was like something out of left field. Like it was like, eh, I, I was not enjoying it all. Yeah. Maybe it's not fair to say it was horrendous art. It just hasn't meshed with like the rest what of what you're used to. Yeah. The yeah, past so couple it, issues. It, it were... was very jarring. And I was like, at parts when I was like, okay, so this isn't moving the story. I was so <laughs> tempted to just like 
brush right past and go to the punchline story, but I finished it. All right. Um, so what am I currently reading this week? I'm actually currently reading and uh, it's always an ongoing thing, but I think the past couple issues have been pretty, pretty well done is the detective comics run currently. Oh yeah. So you have, uh, Mariko Tamaki is the current writer uh, and it's actually been back and forth art with Dan Mora. And of course, Dan Mora is famed for his once and future run, which, uh, Zach and I know of, mm -hmm. but most recently the past two issues, and I'm going to butcher this name. It's done by Victor. Bogan, Bogan, Boganovic. Um, totally. So I totally butchered that. But if you check out this, his art style, it's very Greg Capullo. Okay. I'm looking uh, at the past right couple now. issues have been with both Batman and Huntress. Of, and I'm a big Huntress fan. So I'm enjoying her run in this little story arc that they've been building. Uh, you had a, the lady Clayface in there. This issue so this issue that just came out, which is 1039 of Detective Comics, you had a new character introduced known as Vile. Uh, now, I feel, did you read this issue or no? I haven't read this one yet, but I've been okay. reading the rest of them. Yeah. Okay. So you know what I'm talking about as far as yeah. the art, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's great. So this character, and I'm not too much, you know, in a spoiler, but I feel like this character is, if you've either played, well, have you, have you watched, I guess, Blade 2? Um, you know, with the, what are they called? Like, uh, Blood Pack? Nomac, like oh, Nomac, Nomac character. Yeah. And then, or if you played like Resident Evil four with the Las Plagas, similar with the, the way that, you know, obviously, cause in, in that move, in that game, it's not like normal zombies. They are parasites. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's the way this character is, but it's not just like a parasite that is like a zombie. The character is somebody. And he can kind of like move from character yeah. to character. Uh, but I, I thought the, the first, the fa uh, I should say the past four issues have been a good change. Nothing against Peter Tomasi, who was writing it after James Tinian, but I've thoroughly enjoyed these last four issues um, with this story arc that's kind of been moving. And again, I think the art's awesome. And Mariko taking over as writing has been, uh, you know, it's been a, um, a fresh new start. Yeah. So. I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed it as well. The the character of um I can't remember his first name Worth um you know the like the rich guy who's like going up against Bruce Wayne um you know what I'm talking oh, about has the, with yes. the bazooka <laughs> <laughs> yeah like the art is great but I'm like yo why why do they got this guy like the biggest human being out there like there's even a scene where he's massively dwarfing Batman it's like almost double Bane I feel mm -hmm. like I'm like yo this guy's way too big bro he's way too big. Yeah, yeah. No, I um, know. Yeah, I know exactly who you're talking about. But I think I'm telling you, the art is just, it's straight up Greg Capullo. Like when I was reading it, I actually had to flip back to the front cover and look at the name. And then, you know, like sometimes they don't do it on like the first page where they say who the art, the writer and artist mm -hmm. is. It doesn't come until the end. So I was just like, oh, wow. I was like, this is not Capullo. But the, these last, like I said, these last four issues have been, you know, a lot of fun to read. And then, of course, you get a side story, and the side story is actually has to do a little bit more with Vile, which is some sometimes it's, it's more of a horror thing. Really? Besides the back the backup story, I should say, is more horror than moving like another DC character or one of the Bat family forward. Similar okay. to how like Joker has Punchline, and then you have the Batman has like Ghostmaker. This is a more of like a backup horror story. Did this? Did the previous issue was it was it Detective Comics that had the um, the Penguin um, backstory? Like two issues ago, yeah, yeah. And then like you had the the Lady Clayface, right? I'm, I was excited after that Penguin one because I was like, "Cool, man, bringing Penguin back." That guy doesn't get enough play, you know. Mm -mm. So yeah, I, I I've actually been enjoying. I wasn't sure I was going to enjoy this like DC's new little like plan with like these backup stories, and they definitely decreased their titles. Um, especially with the bat family, it fits perfect. These little backup stories. And you know, mm -hmm. you, you look at the price of the book too, and you're like, Oh God, I don't want to pay this, but it's been worth it, man. Um, like the Batman urban legends. I, I really enjoyed it. It's like four stories, all bat family type stuff. And it, it's cool, man. I, I, I don't mind the price at all. So, mm -hmm. and I guess I'll have just an honorable mention for me. Uh, I spoke about this a little while ago, the Batman future state Gotham. Mm. How did you read this week's? No, I, I gave up. I gave up on future state. Okay, so of course this this storyline puts it back into the future state where um, 
the magistrate is there. It's Gotham City. Red Hood is kind of part of the magistrate crew, and you have Tim and Nightwing kind of trying to find him. Mm-hmm. And this issue actually introduces not only Harley Quinn, but Punchline into the mix. So really interesting aspect that they brought Punchline that far forward mm-hmm. into the future of the DC, wor- uh, DC world. So cool. Um, I'm enjoying the future, the future state still with this you know again the one thing that does bother me is the black and white you know no no colors but i'm sticking with it just because it's a cool red hood storyline and i'm enjoying the 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 last of the future state stuff so but that's it what are we currently reading episode 28 in the books uh anything closing closing words zach oh uh no i don't think so oh i guess one more complaint (laughs) have you been reading man have you been underwhelmed with war the bounty hunters a little bit. I feel like yeah. it's all over the place. I feel like there's no like it's so many books to just get us to this point where they still haven't even sold Boba Fett or I mean uh, Han Solo. And then like mm-hmm. God, now I'm kind of talking about something else. But then like the end where Vader shows up, that doesn't make any sense to me. Why would Vader want to come get Han Solo? Like that dude literally just gave him up like a couple weeks ago to Boba Fett. And so now he shows up at this meeting and he's like Oh, I want to bid for Han. Like, bro, like what? Like, well, I feel I like know. if uh, my thoughts after I read War of the Bounty Hunters 2 yeah. was because you figure he gave up Han and at the time where, you know, obviously he paid he paid the bounty hunters, to take him away. I mm-hmm. guess maybe he wants Han back to get Luke. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, he didn't know. Well, he knew who Luke he, was, but yeah, like he it was, knew stuff changed. Wanted- yeah, yeah com- confirmation that I get it. That yeah. Skywalker is is Luke, like his son. So that's what I feel like. That's when. So. Yeah, I'm just hoping that picks up a little bit, man. There's yeah, we talked about it so many months ago when this series was going to start, and I feel like War of the Bounty Hunters was going to be more of the bounty hunters fighting, not so yeah. much. Yeah, these characters. very underwhelmed. I feel like underwhelmed is the perfect descriptor for War of the Bounty Hunters so far. Yeah, but this one had was very interesting with the gala, similar right. to like the X Men gala, yeah. with all the different uh, Black Sun or uh, mm-hmm. the Pikes. Everyone's in there. Yeah, the Pikes are in there. Of course, Afra's there. Core is running it with Crimson Dawn. Yeah, there's a lot of people that are uh, the Afra. The Afra Vader thing was cool. I thought that was really cool. That might have been like the coolest part of this mm. week's issues. How she saw Vader and was like freaking out. I thought that was really cool. <laughs> yeah, so that's exciting, but. Yep. No, that's all I got. Awesome. So again, thanks everybody who's checking out the podcast. Uh, If you're listening to this early enough, I am doing a whatnot live sale Saturday, July 17th, I believe 15, 16. Yes. 17th at eight o'clock Eastern on the whatnot app. Same name, nemesis underscore prime. You can find me. It's going to be an all star Wars thing. So if you're listening to this either Friday or Saturday morning or afternoon, Check me out on whatnot. I'm going live eight o'clock Eastern time at eight night. Gonna go as long as my phone is alive or as long <laughs> as I got books to sell. So uh, nice. I'm excited to do it. I put been pulling stuff. I've been listening it. Some stuff's already up there. Gonna bring some nice big books. You know, got some surprises as well. But cool. that's it. Uh, that's all from the Comic Con podcast. Thanks everybody so much. We'll check you again next week. Later. Thanks guys. Bye.